my build after many agonizing hours in pob trying to decide between self-cast ice nova and lightning tendrils totems and any of the plethora of modified skills i finally settled on what i know to be a phenomenal league starter i'll be playing cobra lash So let me start by saying there's been a lot of confusion about Cobra Lash. I think a lot of people assume that it's a poison build because Cobra Lash got a poison buff. However, I still don't think Cobra Lash poison is a very good build. I don't recommend it. I have not seen a good version that doesn't have a lot of investment and I just simply don't recommend it. However, hit based critical strike, I believe is the current best way to play Cobra Lash. Cobra Lash just got a big buff. In the early end game, when you'd normally still not have your helm enchant or your divergent gem yet, you're looking at about 26% more damage. Even from level one, this gem has a 9% more damage buff than it had last league. If you can get your hands on some quality early, that number jumps up to 12 or 15. I really do recommend trying to get an early quality gem as those extra chains are not only giving you damage, but they're giving you clear. So why Cobra Lash? This league, I think that Cobra Lash is going to be pretty good at farming ultimatum, which is something that I wanna do. One of the ways that you can easily lose ultimatum encounters is getting too many stacks of ruin. Now, I don't understand all the ins and outs of the ultimatum mechanic, but I did play the league pretty extensively and getting ruin stacks on you from getting hit by enemies can just straight up end your encounter. The ways to avoid that are avoiding hits and not taking damage from hits like blocking. So this build gets a, a healthy chunk of block in the end game and also goes for evade cap. On league start, this build got way cheaper to get pretty good damage. You used to need the divergent gem and the helm enchant, which could end up running you a divine or two depending on how popular the build is. But now you don't need either of those things. You just need a 20 quality gem. As far as gear, in order to kill the eater and the exarch, you just throw on a couple of whatever large clusters and craft your own mediums, which we'll get into, and you can easily take down the pinnacle bosses. The beautiful thing about Cobra Lash is you scale one thing, which is chains, and you get single target damage as well as clear. So let's say you have five projectiles in 10 chains, which is easily achievable. That means every time you attack, you hit 50 targets, ideally, assuming all projectiles chain the maximum number of times. We're attacking anywhere from six to 10 times per second. So at the high end, you're looking at 500 hits per second. With all of the life gain on hit and instant leech we have, that results in tens of thousands of life recovered per second. Even on single target, you're looking at very, very healthy recovery. But while mapping, as long as you're attacking and you don't get one shot, this build pretty much can't die. I have played this build extensively. I have level tested this probably 15 or 20 times at this point. I've played it deep into the end game. I've played it as an assassin, as a dead eye, and it is truly one of my all time favorite skills. It's actually the first video that I ever made that really blew up about a year and a half ago when I first started this journey into YouTube and Twitch. I was proud of it then and I'm more proud of it now. I have fine tuned this build extensively. So let's get into all the details that you need to know if you wanna play this build. I have a full max roll end game guide that you can build towards. That guide has all the information you'll need on the end game gear. So I'm going to focus on league start for this video. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so I finally made a new scene in my OBS so that POB is a little bit zoomed in. Now, if I accidentally cover up any part of the POB with my camera, I'm sorry. But as you can see, it's kind of an awkward uh, zoom of the POB. So bear with me on that. Uh, but my ultra wide monitor requires it. Let's start by giving you an idea of what this build is capable of and what it'll cost you. So this gear is effectively day two gear. Uh, this is going to be very achievable. There is no damage on anything except for the amulet, which has a relatively cheap anoint and a, and a little bit of critical strike multiplier. 
uh, you could easily drop that and barely tell the difference, but effectively there's no there's no damage on any of this gear. It's just a little bit of accuracy and spell suppress uh, life resists. The wasp nest is a 1C item. This will carry you to red maps. There's no reason to get anything but the wasp, wasp nest. If you're going to play this build, just buy this at level 60 as soon as you can afford it and then just shut your brain off and get all the way to red maps. It's incredibly powerful. The way the wasp nest works is it gives you extra chaos damage for enemies affected by at least five poisons. So anything that's tanky that needs to be hit a lot of times, we're attacking somewhere between six to 10 times per second, which means you're gonna get this added damage within a second of attacking. So it might take you a couple of seconds to take down a rare and you'll get that bonus damage pretty quick. We're automatically poisoning from Cobra Lash anyway, 40%, 20% from the wasp nest. So you don't have to worry about investing into poison. You'll get these poisons up pretty quick on anything that needs extra damage. And then I have a bunch of filler jewels down here. Uh, mostly what you're looking for is attack speed if you've dealt a crit recently in life, and then you can get damage, you can get percent damage, anything else. But there are a decent number of jewels available in this build because of the cluster jewels. As you see on the tree, we have four mediums uh, that are basically mandatory. So it's it's got a lot more jewels than the average build does. And I don't even have these two pointers allocated. But jewels are really, really a nice way to get extra life into a build. As you see, we're already at over 4,000 life and we're only level 90. And I still have a couple of jewel sockets here to take that'll give me even more life. So on this day two gear with a five link, and neither uh, Vol Haste or Berserk Up, you're gonna have two million damage. Now, if you get a six link and you enable your Berserk and your Vol Haste, which you're gonna have at some point on bosses, it gets up to five million damage. Now, of course, Vol Haste and Berserk are not always up. But they're usually up when you need them. Um, so this is plenty of damage to take down the Story Eater and Exarch. And really the only thing that you need to spend any currency on is getting these mediums and large cluster jewels. Okay, so I've talked about this a million times, but I'm gonna go over it very briefly one more time. How to get the cluster jewels. You need one cluster jewel that has Fan of Blades on it, okay? This is a very low weighting mod. It's difficult to get. However, alteration spam, 200 alterations. On League Start, that's probably 10 to 15 chaos. Alterations are very easy to come by. Craft one that has Fan of Blades, it doesn't matter what else is on it. You're gonna, you might waste a few points, just get an eight passive, uh, dagger and claw damage cluster and roll it until you get fan of blades if you all you know aug and regal and get some other mods on it great if not it doesn't matter you just need two larges in order to enable your four mediums and one of them needs to have fan of blades on it the other cluster can have a lot of other stuff there's great mods here you have a wind up which gives you access to power charge on crit that's super strong also some multi you have fuel the fight feed the fury really really strong devastator is great although definitely not necessary. Uh, Drive the Destruction is even okay. Just get a couple of decent mods on your second large, but your first large has to have Phantom Blades. The reason that we need that is because we have access to Multi-Shot, which gives us one proj, so that means we don't need it on both. If you get Phantom Blades on both, you can unspec this Multi-Shot wheel, but it's much easier to just get one. And then step two, getting four clusters that have follow through on them. Follow through says projectiles deal 15% increased damage with hits and ailments per each remaining chain. If we have 10 chains left, that is 150% increased damage for this one node. It basically doesn't matter what else you get on these. If you get a four passive medium, now these are projectile damage mediums, and then you alt spam to get just follow through, you can just path through three nodes get the jewel socket, get this node and the one travel node and it's not so bad. So getting these on the on League Start is more important than getting a good two node jewel. Just get follow through. You can craft this yourself and look how easy it is. 43 orbs of alteration. That's somewhere between two and three chaos orbs to craft this yourself. You might get lucky and get another good mod. Uh, if not, it doesn't matter. Just get follow through on four mediums and your build will be cruising. If you have 10 chains which you'll easily have by the time you're crafting these that is 150 percent damage times four that is 600 percent increased damage for these clusters you got to have them they're phenomenal go get them now in the end game you can craft repeater and follow through using reforge caster and harvest repeater is the only caster mod on this entire jewel so every time you reforge caster you're going to get repeater so you basically just do that until you get follow through 
and you've pretty much deterministically crafted one of these jewels. Repeater has proj damage and attack speed, which is phenomenal. So on our day two gear, without our buffs up, 3 million damage, this build feels phenomenal. If you really want, you can swap out vile toxins for chain while mapping to give you additional chains. Yeah, that may be worth it. It's going to depend on the content you're doing. If you're doing really, really juicy stuff, you can do like legions. Chain is going to feel really good. If you're doing maybe ultimatum, you might want to go vile toxins to get that damage. So let's quickly talk about these, these gems. In the end game, you want to get a level 25 Cobra Lash because that gives you an additional chain. But early on, you don't have to worry about that. Added Chaos, Nightblade, increased Critical Strikes, Void Manipulation, and then your last gem is either Vile Toxins or Chain. Once you get rid of the Wasp Nest, I would drop Vile Toxins because you're losing 20% chance to poison, which means this is going to be up less, but this is really good for killing bosses early. We use Whirling Blades. Uh, you can also throw a faster attacks on here. Uh, I prefer to have a Flame Bash so I can get over ledges. We use Grace, Determination, and Defiance Banner. Having both Grace and Determination in your build on League Star is very, very cozy, especially because we also get 100% spell suppression. Unfortunately, you gotta have Wither Totems on this build early. There's no really good way to get Wither otherwise. Because Nightblade automatically applies Elusive to you, you can't use Withering Step anymore because Withering Step can't be used if you already have Elusive. So that was a big nerf to this build, but at the end of the day, it's not that big of a deal. We get plenty of damage and Wither Totems are very strong. You effectively get max Wither almost instantly with, with this four link setup. We have Sniper's Mark and Mark on hit. You can get Sniper's Mark super early, which is another huge buff to Cobra Lash. The same way that Bows got buffed by having this, Cobra Lash did. And we'll talk about the leveling gems in a second. Uh, Self-casting Tornado to get power charge on crit is really nice because tornado also gives you that reflected damage to that single target that you're fighting so not only does it generate power charges but it gives you i think about 10 percent more damage on single target we use an astral projector to put that down as well for single targets uh and then i i use molten shell on left click berserk and vol haste are definitely boss delete buttons you turn these two on and your damage spikes a ton uh basically basically doubles your damage you can't use berserk though until you have the gloves that have rage on hit rage on hit is really really nice it gives you a slow ramping increased movement and attack speed rage gives you a kind of a ramping bonus as you go through the map and then when you get to the boss you hit berserk and you kill it in a second okay so let's talk about leveling You can get Cobra Lash early, but I prefer to wait until around level 14 to switch to it. The reason is you don't have to worry about getting a claw at level one. You spawn as a ranger with a bow. You can just use that bow if you want all the way to 14 and then on the way, find a rare claw that's got some damage on it. And really the second you find that damage, you can switch over to Cobra Lash because Cobra Lash is using the same two gems as Caustic Arrow. So those will already be leveled up. You put an, a Cobra Lash in your offhand, or you can just buy one from Nessa whenever you're ready and just pop it in and you're good to go. Something that I took out of this build was return projectiles. With the buff to damage per chain, I decided that return projectiles is no longer worth it. And just adding more chains to the build is the way to go so once you're in the end game and you have that six link you're going to want to use chain but for our four link we go nightblade and crit strikes early nightblade is a hundred multi so adding uh the base crit of nightblade plus the base crit of increased crit is basically access to a lot of crit very early and then of course we have all these really nice ways of buffing our crit and uh, buffing our crit multi for claws so it's very very trivial to go crit early on, on claws and I, and I recommend it. I know a lot of people like to path down here to precise technique, and I guess you could do that for 30 levels, 20 levels if you really wanted to, and then do a big respec, but I prefer to not do that because of how smooth I think that crit leveling is with Nightblade. Early on, you go uh, Herald of Ice, Herald of Ash, and Precision. I keep Herald of Ice and Herald of Ash for a while because they just provide nice flat damage, and it really helps the clear. You want to get Sniper's Mark the second it's available to you. I think level four, yeah. At level four, you can throw on Sniper's Mark. It's phenomenal. And Mark on hit as soon as you can get it is level 38. You'll probably have to wait until Siosa, I believe, to get the Wither Totem set up going. Now, another option for leveling is you can use either Grace or Haste. Haste feels really nice to make you go faster. And of course, Grace gives you that buffer for incoming damage. If you feel like you are taking too much damage, switch over to Grace. 
because we're going to be using grace in the end game, you should maybe be leveling one in your offhand anyway. You can go to act three and get grace at any time, uh, and it will be leveling for you there. I've done Herald of Ice and Herald of Ash leveling with this before, and it feels really nice. I may try out haste just because I like going fast, especially combined with the Wildwood Ascendancies, which we will get into in a minute. So as far as the tree goes, I have a full leveling tree here. So this is the level 20 tree. You basically come through and take all the attack speed. You grab this life and you immediately want to go up and grab life raker. Getting this life per enemy hit is super nice. And then you can immediately get this effect of elusive, which is going to make you go faster and have more damage. These trees are designed to help you through the leveling process. So it's very, very smooth. So don't forget to uh, don't forget to use these. Then you want to path up here and grab all of this claw damage. Once you have all of this damage, this build feels really, really nice. I feel like this is around the time where it starts to pop off. It's so important that you remember to upgrade your claw regularly. Now, once you get to 60, you can buy a wasp nest. You'll have found a chaos or two in the story at least. So buy a wasp nest right away. You will not regret it. But until then, it is very important. Get a claw that has big flat damage on it. It doesn't matter what it is. It could be physical. It could be chaos. It could be lightning, fire, or cold. Any flat damage is good. The more, the better. And then after that, you want to get attack speed and critical strike chance. You can very easily just take a claw that you find, equip it when you're in any non-town zone, and see how much damage of an increase you get. Always just be trying to upgrade that claw as fast as you can. That is the number one reason why people struggle with this build when you really shouldn't be. So the trees all the way through here, you want to start with Gathering Winds. That's going to give you even more speed. With Warden of the Magi and the extra 30% move speed, this build is going to fly through the story. So anyway, we've got all of these here and then an endgame level 90 tree. After you get through everything in this guide, in the description is a link to a max roll guide. That is getting updated today for 323. And I will be keeping up with that as we go through the first couple of days of the league because I am playing this and I'm really going to have my hands on the new ascendancy. So I'm going to be able to let you know what I think is best for this build going forward. So in the end game, when you get to the point where you're ready to make a claw, what kind of claw do you make? You want to get the best base that you can, which is you want base fizz, you want high crit chance, and you want high attack speed, which means it's going to be one of the uh, later appearing bases. Imperial Claw is the best. Eye Gouger is right there next to it. It's got a little bit less attack speed, but more crit. So I'd say Eye Gouger is just as good as Imperial Claw in the end game. Uh, the Throat Stabber is pretty good. It's got a little bit less fizz, but about the same numbers. The Great White Claw is, is also pretty good. It's a little bit slower, but it's got higher crit chance. Once you start to get down here, you're starting to lose base fizz, which means you're going to you're gonna struggle a little bit to make a good weapon. Uh, just keep in mind, you never want to get the percent leech base claws. These are useless. The life gain on hit, and honestly, mana gain on hit, if you want to go for something like a Gemini claw, is really, really strong. It pretty much solves mana for you without you needing to do much else. I prefer to just keep the mana leech in the instant leech and go for something like an Imperial or an Eye Gouger. Um, but let's, uh, let's just craft one here and kind of show you what you're looking for. The best in slot item is going to have a good roll of flat physical damage, flat chaos damage, and percent physical damage as prefix. In order to get something like this, you can get any three of these fractured and then use either a an essence to get flat fizz or an essence to get the flat chaos. And then you want to get, you know, a couple of other good mods and then craft the last mod. So suffixes that are mandatory, attack speed and critical strike chance. You're basically going to be spamming a fractured base with an essence. So that's already two mods looking for two other mods. And then you will craft the fifth on. It's really not too bad to craft. You don't need to get, you know, super high tiers. But in order to beat a wasp nest, you need something pretty good. So to give you an idea here, this is a 600 DPS claw with all of the mods that I'm looking for. And it only increases our damage by 6%. This is a very, very good claw, and it's only 6% more damage than a wasp nest that's not even perfectly rolled. So just keep in mind when you're crafting a claw that it better be really good in order to beat a wasp nest. Now, of course, wasp nest has the downside of the first uh, four attacks, five attacks, not having the extra added damage. 
Um, so that's definitely definitely a factor. But on single target killing bosses, uh, you don't you barely even notice that. So you want to get something significantly better than a wasp nest before you spend a bunch of currency trying to upgrade. If you go spend five divines making a claw that gets you 10% more damage, it probably wasn't worth it. As far as tinctures goes, one of the really good ones that you can get is hits inflict four withered debuffs for two seconds against enemies that are on full life. So the first hit is going to just apply those four wither debuffs. That's a big damage increase. That'll be really nice to get. I think one of the tinctures is that's a little bit underrated is damaging hits always stun enemies that are on full life. So when you throw out your Cobra Lash, it's going to hit presumably five enemies in a pack and then chain and hit all of the enemies in the pack, which means you're going to mini stun every single enemy before you get to it. So if the first hit doesn't kill it, all of them will be stunned out of their animation. I think that'll actually feel pretty nice. So that might be something to look into. So for the Wildwood Ascendancy, you are going to want to go for the Warden of the Magi. Early on, this is going to give you access to ridiculous buffs during the story. 30% movement speed if you have equipped boots with no socketed gems. During the story, this won't be too hard. There's not that many required gems and you're probably gonna be happy to drop some quality of life to get movement speed just to get through the story. After that, we've got some really strong things like tinctures applied to you have 75% increased effect per empty flash slot. So for things that are giving you some kind of damage, getting increased effect with that would be really nice. Nature's Concoction is really, really cool. It makes it so flash adjacent, adjacent to your tincture, gain charges. Uh, this is gonna give you an opportunity early on to have like permanent uptime of all your flasks. So I definitely recommend starting with Warden of the Magi during the leveling process. In the end game, there's almost no question that the best ascendancy is going to be the Wildwood Primalist. Outside of, of course, niche situations, there's just gonna be so much generic power and you get to choose it, which means incredible, incredible power creep here from the Wildwood Primalist. But definitely start with the uh, Warden of the Magi. And the nice thing about this is once you find them, you can switch between them and you don't have to re-level them up. Okay, that's enough talking from me. I think you've heard enough. Cobra Lash, Deadeye, that's my starter for 323. If you have any questions at all, come over to my Twitch, twitch.tv slash AER0 underscore underscore. I'm going to be making a League Star filter and probably even doing a little bit more testing of this just for fun. But come check out the stream and come say hi and maybe drop that Twitch Prime. If you want to support me, you can like this video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. I appreciate each and every one of you. I hope you have an awesome league start, and we'll see you over at the stream. So as always, take care.